welcome to the Lisa Love Stitching Podcast or oh, Floss Tube. My name is Lisa and you can find me on Instagram as Lisa Love Stitching and on Ravelry as Lisa Loves Yarn 76. Um, I'm not sure which episode this is, but anyway, I'll when I upload I'll put it down below. So, how have you all been? I'm sorry it's been about a fortnight since I did my last Floss Tube. Um, <laughs> Nothing much has changed except I've just been progressing nicely on my um, sampler for my Nan's 100th birthday. And um, I did have a flare up of joint pain the last weekend, um, which I had to spend half a day in bed because I was in agony. But then um, one good thing about stitching, like cross stitch, is that I'm, you know, once the pain's under control a bit, I can still. Um, do cross stitch where I can't knit sometimes so um, that's been really enjoyable so um, I'm powering along because I'm conscious of um, the fact that it might take a little bit to get a few weeks for the framers to frame the finished object for my name's birthday so I don't want to leave it too late to finish and then get framed to take down to Newcastle in June so I've been powering along and I haven't ironed this. I know the trend now is to iron your work to show it, but I haven't. And I haven't even got anything to put behind it, I don't think. Maybe I'll put this behind. Okay, so. The last time I showed you, I'd done some of the writing up here. And now, as you can see, sorry, the light's coming through. Um, this, this white line here, and up the middle is just so I know where the edge of the work is and the centre and then I'll um, unpick that when I'm finished or as I go and what I've done so far is I've put um, the lettering to say 100 years 11th of June 1919 and then I did these cute little eyelet flowers with eyelets in the centre and I got that from a Brenda Keys um, sampler book as well as the um, fancy lettering and then I bought this lettering online which I'll have to put the details down below but I'm doing a fancy letter C for my nan her name's Coral and I've done it in a coral colour in DMC and I've used a variegated DMC thread for the yellow so I can't tell you right now what the number for the yellow is but yeah so that's how it's going it's going to have vines coming up here like stems with leaves coming up here for the flowers so they're all the flowers and then I've just got to do the stems and some little buds and that's it for that and then what I'm going to do is I really wanted to do a fancy letter and it takes up a lot of real estate on the sampler so what I think I would do, because I think it's too tight to put another big S for Smith as her surname, maiden name. So I think I'll just put all the family names down here. I was going to put her siblings in, but I think I'm just going to go with Nan and Pop um, wedding day and then um, my aunts and uncle and then the kids and grandkids and great grandkids. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. And then in, so that'll be up this section here. I'll probably do it one over one. And then to keep it small, and then here I'll do some small motifs, maybe one over one. And then up the top here, I might put some vi violas or pansies or something, um, or roses as well, because they're Nan's favourites. So yeah, so that's what I've done so far. So it's looking really good. Um, it's not certainly not a traditional sampler it's not following any particular rules it's just whatever I deem I like but that's okay it's my own sampler so I can do whatever I want so the coral color for the sampler that I'm using in the C is DMC 3705 that's it there it's really pretty quite bright and cheerful so the flowers in the pattern that I had oops it was like dark colors um, like red and that but that would clash with that color so that's why I've picked yellow 
to go with it and a pale green for the stems and um, yeah that's the beauty of cross stitch you can make it and knitting or whatever you can make it whatever you want so that's my progress for this week just pop that away oh this is the color here I'm gonna do oh wait on oh no I don't have the I don't have the details there okay let me just put this away so I'm disturbing oh. Pearl's seat. She's sitting next to me on the chair. Um, so the green I'm going to go with for the stems is this green in DMC. And it is 470. So it's really pretty. Excuse my chip nail polish. I may get round to it today to take that off so it doesn't look so skanky. Okay, so that's that, and that's all I have to show you for whips, no finishes, and now I've just got nail call, as Pam and Steph like to say. So I bought this from Hands Across the Sea online, it's a sampler, it's Eliza Bell Cox 1832, and I just loved the flowers on this and the bird. Uh, I thought it was just so pretty so I just got the chart and it's really lovely this this is the first time I've bought it bought a hands across the sea but it comes with detail on the sampler itself on the original and the person who stitched it and um, it gives you sort of a information on the items in the flowers that she used that at the time that's what they were Point, you know popular or whatever um, Eliza was one of six children born to Georgia Mary Ann Cox she was born on April 21st 1821 and baptized in June of that year um, in Shoreditch London and Eliza lost her mother while she was a child she grew up in a comfortable middling class family in the city of London, widely referred to simply as the city being differentiated from the phrase the city of London. Um, and it is colloquially, collo colloquially known as the square mile. Um, so it gives you a history of London at the time. And yeah, so that's really lovely. And it comes with the chart, obviously, in colour. And on the back it gives you all the um, threads you need um, yeah so they also sent me a bookmark that has my threads that I need to order for this which is handy if you need to go out and take that out to buy them and a breakdown of the stitches that you need to do so that was one that I got recently um, and I bought that direct from Hands Across the Sea um, in, I think they're in the UK um, and the next mail, mail call item was, I've seen people stitching like Priscilla and Chelsea, um, the Glitter House series. Um, so it's a Glitter Village and I think there's about nine in the series. So I'm going to collect them all and then eventually do the whole village on one big piece of fabric rather than as separate ornaments. So this is number one. That's so cute. Look at the little snowman. How adorable. And this uses classic colour works, but they do have the DMC thread conversion. But I think for these I'm going to go all out and use the colour works. Um, this is, oops, number two. Glitter Village number two. And this is a cute little pink house. And then number three is a little narrow blue house with some trees next to it and I love the white picket fence really really cute so that's all I've got in the mail recently and I did order there's because um, things go designers launch their latest um, charts at market in March um, I think it's held in Texas and linen and threads are traveling there to get the latest and greatest and I saw they had a preview of the Botany Bay sampler which it's unusual to see one that's Australian themed sampler so 
I ordered that. Um, it's got like little ships and um, tall ships and it's like the docks and things like that at Botany Bay, which I used to work near Botany Bay um, when I lived in Sydney, so that's cool. So um, I've ordered that and then I noticed um, Starcross Stitcher Tash, she is um, has joined forces with her mum who has a quilt shop on Etsy and they're now going to be um, getting charts. So it's really awesome to have somewhere in Australia and I like to support um, small business. And they're going, to, uh, Tash is going to the market in Texas and um, they've got like a bee, a little bee, quilted bee um, chart that they're going to be getting in. So I'm going to order that this week. I think it's a pre-order. And it's really cute. It's got like a a, bee, a big bumblebee in the in the center, and then it's got like quilted pattern on his back and around the edge. So I'm going to get that, and um, we'll see what else comes out at market. Um, I'm just mindful. I don't want to over spend on things because I'm saving up for the um, retreat. However, some things go out of print, so you just don't want to miss out. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that um, coming in the mail and that's all. And I just sort of show you my, mark my stitches on Etsy. She's in Sydney. She has these cute little needle minders. So this is a free, I think this was a free one she gave me. It's a little sheep. So it's a white sheep and then I've got a pink one on the back. So that's really cute. And they're quite strong magnets so that's good so yeah so that's it as you can see i've got the backyard is all bush we have a bush reserve behind us so you can see all the trees up the back there a bit and that's all i have for you today so just a short um check-in um hopefully you won't get too bored by the fact that i'm just showing my sampler but that's all i'm working on for the next couple of months till it gets done and then after that i can you know work on multiple projects but at the moment because i have that goal of getting it for my nan um she's getting some dementia now not a lot but she's getting a bit of dementia now so i thought mm, i wanted her to know that i'm doing it for her should the worst happen so i told her the other day so she was really excited about her sampler and um so that was nice so yeah, so anyway, I can't wait to give it to her, have it finished and give it to her and see her face and and be there to give her a hug on her birthday for a hundred years and um, such a milestone. Um, so yeah, so what else has been happening? I've been doing a lot of family history research and I found out I'm a direct, um, you know, great-great-granddaughter of Robert the Bruce and... Um, Eleanor, daughter of Lily Wellen the Great, the Welsh King. <laughs> so that's been interesting. Um, I never really watched Braveheart before, but I watched that the other day just to see about Robert the Bruce. So that was interesting. And yeah, so it's just really interesting seeing, because um, I did my ancestry DNA and it sort of come up with, you know, mostly um, Great Britain, Wales and Northwestern Europe and then the other half was Scottish and Irish um, but I didn't expect Wales to be in there so I guess that must be from there because there's nothing in our recent history from Wales because um, I've done right back so the first Welsh person was Eleanor, daughter of Lily Welland the Great so that's interesting and um, yeah, so that's all I've been doing is family history stuff, stitching, a little bit of knitting on my northeasterly, and that's about it. So anyway, whatever you're doing for the weekend, I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll catch you later. Bye.